spiritual baddies, entrepreneurs, and everyone in between. You're listening to the Embodiment Podcast, where we dig into who you are behind closed doors. And even if you aren't an entrepreneur or on your spiritual journey, but you're looking for something to listen to while you're on the treadmill, or on the road, or just looking for some new knowledge to gain, welcome. I'm your co-host, Ashley Fry. And I'm Man Out Series. Okay, so we've got a fun... Well, <laughs> fun, a, a riveting. <laughs> no, we're gonna we're gonna have a bit of a fun start to this episode. So we're actually we had recorded this episode and then we decided to scrap it completely because in thinking about what we had recorded, we realized and reflected and decided that it would be better to reshape it and reframe it um, in a way that's more beneficial for you guys listening. Uh, but before we do that. We are re-recording this on the day of our one-year anniversary of our podcast being out. So we're filming this. Anna was dating. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's lying. I'm single. <laughs> she's single and she's ready to mingle, guys. Been single for Hit over a year now. Hit the DMs. Um, but yeah, so we have our bottle of champagne. Sorry, that threw me off. <laughs> We have our bottle of champagne that we're going to pop and we're going to make peach mimosas. Live on camera because why the hell not? Yeah, so. Ready. Okay, okay. See, let's see. To, I like, if we didn't have electronics around us, I would want to shake it and pop it. Oh, shake but... it. <laughs> yeah, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to be respectful about the bit that I pop this. I'm going to get it near the mic, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, for the AS. Race your... Race your ear. ASMR. This is what we love to see. This is what I. This is what we wait for. Probably not going to make a loud noise. I'm scared. It's little, I've bartended. But why do I still get scared? Yeah, it's not going to make a loud noise. Ashley, <laughs> blows up. <gasps> okay. How 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 much? I'm going to fill the glass half full. Oh, you're you're making them strong. She's me. This would be like a a a twenty dollar drink, at like a bar. Like the now she's putting this would be like a twenty. This would be a twenty dollar drink at a bar with all of this much alcohol in it. Maybe more than twenty dollars. It's probably thirty actually. With that amount of champagne, our mimosas today we got mimosas today and they were not that full. Like they, they were tiny. They were tiny. Wait, I forgot how big these glasses are. <laughs> we're, we're getting uh, still got my eye. It is. For you guys at home that aren't built again, why is it my glass? Why do I keep spilling with mine? And now it's time for the peach juice. You made these really good peach um bellinis, frozen peach bellinis that one time. They were actually really good. I still think of those. Those still I take pride in putting intention into play. You are a good bartender. Ashley really is. She she points actually. Out. I'm not bartending anymore. But you still are a bartender. I'm, yeah. Well, I feel like it's one of those things, like, working at McDonald's, that once you learn how to do yeah. it and you're doing it, like, it's it becomes second nature. Especially, especially when you work in, like, a fast-paced and, like, demanding environment. Yeah. So. But I also think it's, like, it's, like, it's like a good change, though, because from McDonald's to bartending, like, sure, they are similar in certain ways, but, like, you have to... I compare pivot. I compare Starbucks to bartending. Oh yeah, hey, it's, it's more comparable. Yeah, yeah. But like, cheers, cheers. Okay, that's actually good. That's actually bearable. I thought I was gonna. I was gonna drink it. I was like, oh. no, I love. I love it. I love champagne. <laughs> I'm like, I'm keep. I'm gonna keep drinking it. I love champagne. Okay, so we're gonna have some fun today. We're going to have some good talks today. We're some good talks with a little bit of alcohol to boost. <laughs> we, had a, we had a long day today, too, so this is a nice way to finish it off. We did. We just had I've, pizza, too. Yeah, I've been with Mano since 11.30 this morning. Oh, yeah, 11.30. And it's 10 p.m. Looks and not Yep. So, yeah, today we're going to be talking about allowing change and accepting uncertainty and then in that, the selfish, the, 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 the selfish assurance and the wisdom that comes along with it. Because the more that you start to accept uncertainty, I feel as though there's wisdom in accepting the unknown. You become wiser once you can accept that you don't know everything, right? 
when you constantly are trying to know everything, you learn that there's so much that you don't know. And so when you okay. accept that, it just, it makes your way of approaching things a whole lot wiser. It makes your explanations a whole lot wiser, your reasoning and everything. A lot. And I think a lot of people try to force changes to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is inherently an issue just because when you try to force something, you're not in a flow state. Yeah. Right. And and in terms of energy, what we talk about a lot is always being in that flow state and kind of mimicking the energy that you want to attract. Mm -hmm. And so the way I like to think about it in terms of like change and allowing change to happen is like think of it as like a river right or water flowing yeah okay and I, we always talk about like having a mind rivers and that kind of stuff but it kind of goes into that but in an analogy to explain it it's you have a river and water is flowing through it yeah no matter what you do you cannot stop the flow of water water always finds a way right and that water in this context is the change yeah so a change will find its way to you and it will find a way to implement it within your life if it is meant for you yeah but if you try to force stuff, like say you try to put a boulder in the middle of the river, yeah, that's not going to stop the flow of water. The water, it's gonna, it's gonna find a way. Around. It's gonna find a way around. Yeah, right. So that's a very good analogy. So it's like never, don't try to force anything. Be more in a flow state of mind. Like, you know what? A lot of people are gonna think that, and they're gonna they're gonna hear that, and they're gonna say like, what is what does it even mean? Like, what is a flow state of mind? Yeah. How would you describe a flow state? I'd say. The the most optimal way to describe it or the easiest way is just having an open mind. Yeah. Obviously, that's a little broad, but if I were to go dig a little deeper into what a flow state of mind is, it's, yeah. it's essentially putting yourself in the framing that whatever you are doing now is what you are meant to be doing. And because of that, anything that comes into your life mm -hmm. is meant to happen. So just having the thought process of saying, okay, like I'm doing this specific thing. Like say I'm I'm a farmer right now. I'm in the farming industry right now. And if like a new pesticide comes out, that's like better to use, yeah. right? That's a, that's a big change. And then some farmers would be like, no, I know it works. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, they stick to their they, conservative ways. Right. And this also kind of plays into adopting innovation, like in that context specifically. Mm -hmm. But if you were to adopt a new method, like say a new pesticide, right? I'm just giving that as an example, but like a new pesticide to that is healthier, that is less toxic to people, whatever, you're taking a risk, but it's a change, right? So it's not like it's going to have a negative, it could have a negative effect, it's a risk, but it's almost as if you're going into a dark cave with a torch, yeah. right? You can't see the whole cave lit up. Yeah. You can see sections, right, yeah. that you're walking through and step by step. Well, in that change comes with risk exactly right? it's Everything. accepting it's accepting the risk that and that uncertainty that and tying that back to that that makes it almost if you're not changing and you're not learning things you're stuck in one place it's a good example of it was it blackberry or no let's talk about kodak Ooh. remember when everyone started shifting to digital <laughs> who is that he who shall not be named are we still recording are we i think so there we are yeah okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah we are wow we're good, we're good, we're good. um but let's talk about kodak so mm -hmm. when everyone started transferring to digital and stuff like that they decided not to and then what happened their business fell under and they used to be a market leader. Yeah, they, they were. And that's why everyone was shocked that that was the route that they decided to take. So it just goes to show you that that risk is beneficial when you're looking at, especially when it comes to nowadays environment and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, think about BlackBerry. You you mentioned BlackBerry very briefly, but like BlackBerry as a company is... I think, in my opinion, the perfect example of that, and Kodak is too, because they were a market leader. Oops, I just slapped my mic. But BlackBerry once used to be literally the most adopted. Like, every person, every business person at least, had a BlackBerry. Yeah. And our teachers were talking to us about it, and they said, 
they like they worked for telecommunications companies and like all these other companies and they would pay for their blackberries so everyone had a blackberry yeah. right you were incentivized to have a blackberry and at the pivotal point where apple released the iphone i think I believe 2007 um at 9 41 a.m on some day you know that like i know justin bieber's birthday <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a techie i'm a techie <laughs> So, and then that's actually fun fact. Apple, the reason you go into every Apple store and you see it says 941 on all the times or on, is because that's the, the time they released the, the first crazy. iPhone. So they did that in 2007. BlackBerry initially were like, no one's going to use that. Like people want keyboards. They want, they want to actually type. They don't want to have a screen. Like it's just going to be a useless device. And there are still some people out there who prefer that, but the general public, you have to look at, Let's look at Apple's valuation versus Blackberry's. Yeah. And that will explain it all. Yeah. yeah. Because I, Blackberry used to be bigger than Apple. Like, they used to be the dominating force, the dominating company. And then they did not take the risk because they didn't want... They were like, no, we know. We're the market leader. We don't care. And look where they are now. Now, they've had to pivot fully from hardware that's... and go to software. Also... I should stop. I that's should a it. good example of ego and the yeah. inability to change that comes along with that ego right yeah. they said no we are this and yes you want to reinforce your beliefs about yourself or your company but if you're not malleable in the sense of things that are happening around you like the world is ever changing society is ever changing social media now is ever changing we had a gap where social media and technology came into our world look at what's happened in the same timeline that it took for them to de develop like the surf so the first cell phone and like transverse that into our timeline now of that say you were to put that timeline into the present date look at how much things have changed in the same timeline it's it's a world's difference and and i think that's a great example i think Another example that's pertaining look, right now to what's happening in the world is AI. Mm -hmm. A year ago today. But exactly, exactly that. We're at the like, point where kids can use chat GBT. GB. GPT. <laughs> GB. Chat GB. <laughs> chat GPT for... Guilty. Um, <laughs> for school and for... You can use it for creating content ideas. You can use it for anything like that. They have literal AI bots showing up to sports games and stuff yeah do you think we could have imagined that being 2023's reality 20 years ago that's the thing no right? but it's so crucial because it's not only that this change happened that's so big like this change this ai revolution is bigger than the iphone it's bigger than the industrial revolution like it is probably one of the biggest things that we're going through and people don't like people kind of know they don't just they can't conceptualize how big it actually is yeah. because now our development as a civilization is like no joke 100x yeah. what it would be if we didn't have AI. Like now our civil we are going to go so fast and that also just shows some changes go really fast, way faster than others. And it's the ability to adapt to those in a really, really quick way. Yeah. Like a lot of companies did when AI came out, they were like, hey, we're going to start integrating like AI features and some of them obviously did it in not creative ways of which basically made chat GPT for themselves. Yeah. Which is you know what that puts into my head too? When we've talked about in the past how our generation is the most entrepreneurial or yeah, yeah let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at entrepreneurial. And there's obviously ways where you could um counter argue that. But think about the fact that we have all these tools, right? You can run five businesses at once which we are with ease with, with ease we are, we are doing because of tools like that yeah right and so yeah it might be taking away the steps of having to think about certain things or whatever but it opens up that door to being able to apply that to all these different businesses or all these different projects and expand in a way that benefits everyone Right. And you're not overexerting yourself in certain ways that people were in the past, but you're also overexerting yourself in ways that the world has never seen before. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I think 
that's like i actually relate to that one because for me we both run a sh- like a crap ton of businesses we do a lot yeah if i did not have ai i probably would not be able to oh i probably would not with command with school with, um, with school doing social yeah. media doing lashes doing the podcast doing all of that like think about even the clips that we're making for our podcast it's ai sitting there and having and i've been editing vlogs recently so i've been manually doing that stuff i also use something to help generate the subtitles before but i still go through and i double check everything and sometimes you see things sometimes you don't sometimes you have to go back like three times four times imagine if we had to do that for every single one of our podcast clips or sit through and watch that video over and over again to try and pull out the most beneficial, the most engaging, the most educating points of the videos. That would like we'd be sitting there for maybe a couple of days until we had perfected the subtitles, the actual like clips themselves, uh, making sure there's no overlapping of stuff, uh, cropping the videos like that. That in itself would take so much time. So you put that on top of everything else you're doing. Like how many classes are you taking right now? Right in this semester, I have four. Okay, I'm taking four as well right now. That, like, four is a lot still, right? Like, you're only in class for, what is that, 12 hours a week, technically. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, no, each our class, I believe, are four hours, three Three hours. hours. Yeah. yeah, three times four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no exactly, that's one <laughs> But yeah, so you're in class 12 hours a week, but you're also expected to do at least 10 hours of work outside of that, at minimum, minimum, because we have one class that, expects 10 plus i think half of that so five right yeah. our capstone they expect yeah, us yeah. to do 10 they don't expect us to do more than 50 percent of that on our own in individual projects but think about that in itself so that's another 40 hours which is a full work week a full nine to five worked work week and on then of running businesses and then running businesses but think about the kids who or the students who are working two part-time, two full-time jobs on top of that to pay for that schooling. Like, without having these tools, a lot of people in this economy, because of how advanced things are now, would not be surviving. And it also just goes in hand in hand with the job market too, because not only do these tools and like the advancement of these tools... I like how we've changed from yeah, yeah. change... <laughs> And uncertainty into this topic. Yeah. It's a good. It's a good topic, though. It, it well, it is because it's so relevant to what we're doing right and now. And it does go hand in hand with change. It, it, it well, it is. It's with the biggest change in our. I I guarantee you, the biggest changes that we will go through in our lifetimes, as Gen Z and like whoever everyone else that's watching this is going to go through, is the revolution of AI, mm-hmm. and the revolution of quantum computing. Yeah. Those two things are going to happen within our lifetime, and. They're going to be the biggest things that have happened in the entire history of the world. Yeah. And they say, like, for example, I mean, you were talking about the use of tools, right, for students. And I 100% agree. I think yeah. professors and people alike, educators, think that these tools are everyone's downfall. They're like, I actually they think they're argument. making us stupider. I actually had an art. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stupid is not a word. I'm, I'm kidding. It's not a word, but I'm going to correct you. It is in my world. Yeah, it is. Okay. But. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing. I feel like it's making them stupider. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect so, example. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no. Ask How many fishes I... do you have? How many fishes? <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> so, a no lot of fishes like to the cool. the what? I said no fishes? Cool. No fishes? Yeah, I don't have any fishes. Not at all. Zero. Some people actually use that word. That's the one that's one word out of all the words that are not supposed to be words that bothers me. Fishes. 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 <laughs> fishes what? Like 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 I he fishes. Yeah. Not like yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it would be he is fishing. Yeah, he is fishing. Yeah. And you have one fish or you have 15 fish? Yeah, yeah. Why well, say fishes? I, like, I get fishies. Like, Look at the little fishies. Or like the gold fishies, the goldfish crackers. I want some fishies, you know? Yeah, but that's not literal fish. No, 
Yeah. What's up, me? Sorry. Wait, how are you talking about? <laughs> oh, that's super good. Yeah, that's fine. A lot of educators, as I was saying, like, 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 l- they like, like to use AI as like a scapegoat for the reason that the generation, they think the generation is dumb and lazy and boring. Okay. And I could not disagree more. I actually think that because they're trying to withhold AI and the, the advancement of teaching students how to use AI to, to their benefit. I had... Did you, for your ENT627 class, um, social entrepreneurship, you're taking that right now, correct? Mm-hmm. Did you have a sit down in your class where she took you through chat GPT? No. See, when I took that class last semester, we had a whole class dedicated to that. Really? Yeah. Maybe it's because of the evaluation at the end of the year. Maybe the school put some terms in line for that. But our my teacher, your teacher for that class literally had us, and I think I was with you in your dorm, and you were doing work when I had that. I probably was, like, taking a nap or something because I was so exhausted last semester. But, yeah, she had two librarians come in and teach us about them. Teach us about it. Interesting, because I'm in her class right now, and we have not learned anything about it. Yeah, we had a full class dedicated to that. So that's, but it's cool to see how, like, some teachers might feel yeah like it benefits us whereas other teachers might feel as though it's making us stupider well some teachers just think they're like they look at the ai and they say no students can use it to cheat they probably also think it's unfair because they didn't have that tool when they were yeah in school and you know what i would like lila what i like to say is life is unfair get over it because when we were back in whatever they were younger in 1970 they didn't. They barely had laptops and computers. Yeah. What do you do? You expect me to write down everything on a piece of paper? No. We have laptops. It's it. It pisses me off. It annoys me when people try to say, "When I was your age, I didn't have any." T-. I'm like, good for you. Why would I? This is my reality. This is my reality. Why would I compare myself to you? Why would I put that mental note in my head saying, "Okay, yeah, when you were younger, sure, okay, we we it's good to know history. Like when you were younger, you did not have this technology. You didn't, you didn't have these tools. You had to do it manually." But to make that as the primary assumption into why a generation is the way it is yeah. is absolutely not a, a, the correct way of going about it. Because yeah. what does that tell you about their thought process about change? And that's perfect that you say that because I, I personally believe that along with, and we talked about last time how, and we talked about this when we were talking to Shay, about how the world prioritizes uh self-care and uh like balance work like yeah. balance a lot more now and i think and this goes along with that in a sense but a lot of our generation has prioritized self-improvement and i think that makes us a lot more receptive to change in comparison to other generations and i also think that because we have been at the front face of social media changing, technology changing, all of that changing right in front of our faces. And we've had no choice but to deal with those changes. And the mental health crisis, all of that, having that in front of our faces, I think our COVID, COVID, all of that, I think our generation, whether people believe it or not, is a lot more susceptible to change and uncertainty than other... and. That's not to compare that to things that have happened in the past historically. Like COVID obviously is, could be compared to other, um, what's the word? Other big historical events, but it's also so different because of the way it played out and because of the tools that we have. So people were still working. People were still doing all of this. People were still sitting at home in front of their computer, um, people were looking for ways to build businesses based on the changes that were being made. And so I think because of that, we're just a lot more susceptible to change. Um, And I think that plays out in every aspect of our lives as well. When we talk about mental health and how we were kind of the guinea pigs for the realization of a lot of mental health issues. And so labeling certain mental health issues became very glorified at the beginning of even when we were probably like 10, 15 years old. And yeah, it's only maybe 
Seven. It's definitely going better though. No, it's way better. But that's what I mean is it's constantly changing and it's changing almost at the speed as other things are changing. And so we see this, we're seeing all of this happen, even like the different revolutions that are happening in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Like they are changing because of the accessibility we have to certain information because of these tools and stuff. We were, we were even talking about this as we were walking earlier and we were talking about how the older generations rely on news as their primary source. Yes. Right. And cause that's what they grew up with. They grew up constantly watching the news and knowing and believing and being taught that the news was the, the best way to get your information. Yeah. I actually, I grew up in a household where I wasn't really allowed to put the news on at a certain age. I think maybe when I turned like eight or nine years old, I like, we just never were allowed to have the news on. We barely even had cable in our house. I would go and watch the family channel at my friends' houses and I would end up staying there for so long because I just loved watching, uh, like, oh my God, Teenage Drum Island and stuff like that. Yes. Right? Yeah. But, and like Hannah Montana was on those channels and stuff. I love her. <laughs> but I am I grew up in a house where it was, it kind of countered that. And so my parents have never really, like my mom, her dad is an avid news watcher. But again, my mom doesn't sit there and watch the news. She obviously checks things that she needs to and there are reports when it comes to uh, the uh, economy and stuff like that that is really important to gain from the news. But when it comes to the news is kind of used as like a fear factor. And we've seen how yes. they've manipulated it in certain ways. And so I think our generation, if we're looking at it as a whole, we're a lot, we're a lot more inclined to challenge things that we are told rather than just believe them right away and that's the thing that also plays into some of the, some of the way we consume information because we don't just watch the news i personally don't i don't even have the news i don't watch it i don't care for the news yeah because i know that the news is biased and i've seen so many different documentaries and so many different pieces online and also just facts of who owns every news channel it's all owned by mostly the same like th few companies yeah mostly owned by one and they control the narrative of everything so why would i want get consume knowledge that yeah. is being fed to them because then extra you're just growth. you're just living in the timeline that they want you to live in and now we have tiktok but the thing is with we have tiktok we have social media we have we have all these we're in an in fun uh, we're in an unfortunate situation when it comes to instagram and stuff like that because we are shadowed from a lot of stuff going on in yeah. the world so that's yeah. kind of a downside to that is there's they still have some control control over but not full control yeah because you cannot hide the truth to the full extent if the population wants to get something out there yeah the thing is there's power in numbers and no matter what someone does no matter the prerogative of if someone wants to hide information or want to stop something from getting out if the masses want it out, they will get it out yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. There's no stopping that. And that's why the government, all these different third parties are so keen on keeping everyone asleep. Yeah. They want to keep everyone under their, their guise so no one stands up to them yeah. and brings this knowledge to, to the public eye yeah. because it benefits them and it benefits the bottom line for them specifically. Yeah. And that's just the sad truth of it. The difference is with this age of information, because now we're in the age of with internet, with TikTok, with social medias, with anything that we do online, we are able, and this is the first time in history that we've been able to do this, teach ourselves about relevant things in history mm -hmm. and things that are ongoing from different perspectives of literally anyone. Mm -hmm. On TikTok, you see 400 million perspectives. Yeah. And... You could not do that before. That's why I also, I love when I'm on TikTok and having the ability to read through comments because I'll watch a video, but then I'll sit there for 10 minutes going through and reading yeah. the comments because it's really cool to see different people's perspectives. And I'm not someone who sees something and decides right away how I feel about something. I like to gain more information about it um, or like about people too, yeah. right? Like when somebody's being canceled and stuff like that. I like to go through and read that stuff 
so I can understand the different opinions people have on have on it based on certain facts or certain controversies and stuff like that. So I don't know. We're just and to counter the argument that we're making, there are a lot of people who are maybe lazier because of the accessibility to the things we have on technology uh, with technology, but. It's almost though it's, I feel like our brains move at a certain pace because of it and because our brains can move so much faster with certain things. Think about um, trying to teach maybe your mom something like the amount of times I've tried to teach my mom how to use Snapchat properly. Okay. And it's just, it doesn't stick in her brain. Whereas you or me or anyone of our generation, my little brother, we could download an app on uh, the app store. We could go find a website. We could find any kind of software and figure it out on our own because that's what we grew up with. Exactly. Because that's what we were used to. We have a tailored thinking because of it. Yeah. And that's why it's different circumstances equal different outcomes exactly but, but that's exactly it is yeah and that to put that with change the more that you put yourself in different circumstances the more that you're going to experience different outcomes and you're going to feel more comfortable experiencing different outcomes rather than feeling like you need to fight it or for, force a certain outcome like exactly why do you think people say stay get out of your comfort zone yeah either get out of your comfort zone or expand it yeah because you cannot grow if you're comfortable you are not growing yeah the only times I've ever grown in my life, and I'm not talking about just height, but I'm talking about mentally grown in terms of my knowledge, in terms of my capabilities, in terms of my skills, is when I stepped outside of my comfort zone and did something that scared me and agreed. And honestly, this is something that Richard Branson says, but he says, no oh, matter Richard what, Branson. yeah, no matter what, he says, if someone comes to you and gives you an amazing opportunity, always say yes, even if you don't know how to do it. And I did that every, every point of my life. The first time I ever got asked to do a website, I did not, I, I knew how to do it myself, but I was like, I don't know how to do it for someone else. Yeah. I still said yes anyways. I was like, yeah, sure. I still did it. Same thing for e-commerce. I, I didn't, I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I started e-commerce. Yeah. I literally had no idea. I was like, oh, this is fun. I, well, See, that's really cool that you say that because I personally, I feel like that's something I've also experienced a lot in my life and maybe in different scenarios. Yeah. But I'm always, if I don't know how to figure something out and maybe... This is something where maybe I should have asked for help in certain areas a little bit more because I tend to not ask for help where I need it. But I always figure it out. Like, I always find a way to figure it out. I have always done that, and I think I always will. And I've been more susceptible to, like, actually asking for help in the more recent years because I've become more aware of the way that I respond to things and the way that I go about things. But, again, I think that's also just a lot of our generation or maybe it's a problem solver or yeah that's it and i think some people are better suited to be better problem solvers and like entrepreneurs entrepreneurial minds yeah. i know there's definitely people in our generation that aren't gonna be entrepreneurs. well some people are physical problem solvers some people are right. mental problem solvers some people are um apl like applied problem solvers some people like to be behind the scenes it's different for everyone exactly no one person is the same and i'm glad that you brought that up because when we talk about Gen Z, when Gen Z is brought up, it's under the same umbrella. It's like everyone's under the same umbrella, but it's like any other generation. There's different people within the umbrella. It's not just one type of one, one archetype of person. It's literally like hundreds of thousands of different pe types of people yeah. under one umbrella that is Gen Z. But the one commonality between all Gen Z is they're all good at technology and not like they're computer whizzes. But they are better than the previous generation. Of but that's exactly what I mean before is we don't need like say you order something off Amazon or you order something from Ikea and it comes with a step by step how to build it. I I still use those when it comes to building stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. But we don't need like when I sign into a new software, I don't you know how they give you like the little. Yeah, I don't yeah. ever accept that. Yes, yeah, so you know, I just cancel it. Yeah. So I'm like, I, because another thing about learning and growing is doing things on your own. Uh -huh. Because I've realized for me in school, the reason I always was so 
unimpressed by school and not just like bored when it came to school was because everything they taught me it was I was falling asleep because I, I wasn't doing it so I wasn't actually retaining the knowledge on tests I wouldn't do good because I did I wasn't retaining knowledge yeah I got older in high I end of high school where I started actually doing things on my own my own business doing but, things you like to do that I like to do and I was actually learning a lot and I was like Wow, I'm, I actually, and I thought up to that point, I thought it was dumb because I was like, I just don't yeah, I remember learn. this. And then after I was like, wait a minute, I actually am good at stuff. It's just that I wasn't learning something that I was interested in. Yeah. Because in schools, sure, what they, their main premise You're taught is, the umbrella of what they want you to know. So then you're employable. Yeah. yeah. They want you to know a baseline knowledge so then you can be employed somewhere. Yeah. Like, why don't we have a credit class? Why don't we have right? a, a tax taxes class? class? Yeah. That's the two biggest class. I literally told my, my teacher. Did you go to a school that had a cooking class? I did. Okay. I didn't I go did. to a school that had a cooking class. I actually took it. Really? Yeah. See, I think that is beneficial. That's a really, and I think, I think, because okay, so I went to an IB school, so it was very academically driven. Yeah. But I still think, and maybe they had that in like our CAS, which is our creativity, activity, and service um, part of the program. But I still think it would have been beneficial to, even if it's like grade seven, you have a mandatory one hour a week where you do cooking or something. Yeah. Just because those are real life skills that some people don't get taught at home. They don't have the opportunity to be taught that by their parents. Maybe their parents don't cook. Maybe, you know what I mean? Yeah. Especially I'd, and in the school that I went to, there were a lot of families who were, I'd say, in a bit more of like the middle higher class or higher middle class. And so a lot of those parents probably didn't spend time at home cooking to teach their kids. And that when you're sending your kid off to university or college or wherever, where they move out, I guess it's one of those things where you could say, well, you got to figure it out on your own. But that would be really beneficial to have in school. So I always admired or I always envied my friends who had their cooking class. Yeah, because it does teach you good skills to teach about nutrition and, yeah. and how to actually create a meal and what it should be composed of and the thing that i, I love about the time we're in right now the time in, in in the world the grand scheme of things that we're in right now and bringing back ai into this is we are in the creator economy and what i like to liken that to is you don't need a teacher anymore because you can teach you can choose whoever you'd like to teach you on YouTube, you can go and you can learn from any single creator. A mentor in the is a world. lot more important than a teacher, I'd say. Yeah, and a mentor, or a coach. But the thing is that you can pick that now. Like before, you had to have a teacher, and that even if that teacher was not teaching your style, you had to learn from them. You have now have the opportunity to go find anyone who teaches in any way that you find resonates with you the best. Yeah, you suitable. Can learn from them. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it. And intertwining AI into that too now teachers and whoever educators creators can use that tool to help make more content so they can teach more people in the style that they want to learn if I like to learn how to make a shed right and I go on YouTube and the first three videos I'm like no I can't learn from this person but the th fourth video is like a grumpy old man who's who's just having fun he's like you just need to do this 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 I'm like yeah I learned that like I love that yeah. okay I'm gonna watch him and then that's how you learn. You you find your mentors, your teachers, and we're in that time where you can do that now it's so easily. It's yeah. really a search yeah. on YouTube yeah. or on Google. Yeah. No, or TikTok. No, and you're so right. I remember when I was younger, there would be not oh my god, I say that like I'm old. Um, we're actually in our thirties, guys. <laughs> but there would be times where my dad would be trying to figure something out. I'm like, just go on YouTube. Just yeah. go on YouTube. It'll make your life so much easier. And maybe you'll learn something from it. But I think another thing about the older generation is when they have kids that are in Gen Z, they rely heavily on them because they, they know that we are better at technology. And the reason that the, the downside to that is we're like a crutch to them mm -hmm. because they, they, they say, okay, because they know I don't need to learn. And that's where the mind block comes in because when you stop or when you even put that thought in your mind that you need, you can, you have the ability to stop learning, you're stopping your growth. Yeah. And maybe you're still learning in other aspects, but you're still stopping your growth in one area. 
And that one area is still an important area, especially if you're relying on someone else as a crutch. Yeah. Even if you do have employees, you should always and I live by this. You should always know in and out what your employees are doing so they can't scam you. Because you don't know if someone goes behind your back. If if you hire someone for a job and they tell you they're doing something and you are not 100% aware of what the task is, you're just going to believe everything they say. And how are you supposed to track the KPIs? How are you supposed to know if that's working or not? You need to know what is happening mm-hmm. so you can't, so you don't get taken advantage of. Yeah. That's also part of just self-growth, right? Knowing what you don't know and knowing what you need to know and then learning. Yeah. And being aware. And being aware, right? Yeah. My favorite thing in the world, awareness. My, yeah. One of my favorite words probably or concepts. <laughs> wow, I just said the champagne's room gets me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that pizza did. Not a sip for good luck. I don't I don't think that pizza did us good. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? It Every wasn't pizza. enough carbs. <laughs> we, 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 yeah. It's the worst luck it is. You do my lash, I'm like... <laughs> oh my gosh. Me doing uh, your lashes? Or eyebrows? Oh, lashes. Lashes, okay. Well, oh god. <laughs> oh god. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, let's... That was a pretty in-depth convo right there. No, that was good. I really liked that. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the route that it took. Yeah. Well, yeah. in many routes that well, it took. Well, it's so prevalent to what our world is right now, where it's evolving to. Well, and it goes hand in hand with change too. It's you know exactly what. It literally, AI is change. Yeah. AI creator economy. Like, these are things. These are, in, if we went 10 years ago, these are incomprehensible things. Even, and to talk about that, I, you were there, but I was on the phone with my grandpa he was like, well, where did you get these sources? And I was like, from people online who are in this area who are dealing with this right now. Yeah. And he was like, well, you might want to check that. But then, like, sir, I know, know, I know, I know that they're not owned by a company that's controlling the rest of the other news sources. Yeah. I know that they're in an, like an individual speaking on their truth versus something that they're being paid to put out there and so it just it a lot of people a lot of i don't want to say older people it's not true there are people out there who are 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 older minded yeah who are open-minded oh yeah but it just again we can't group as as they're grouping us they're grouping gen z as one thing we can't group them as one thing because that'd be a hypocritical amount but it's it's a spectrum it is exactly such a big spectrum right with the amount of tools that we have too think about like coding dude i would never be able to code in my life nor would i want to code that is not something i would ever put myself up to but there's people out there who hop on that and they right away they know exactly what they're doing and that's also about being aware yeah because i i can speak to that because i actually tried to learn how to code oh god and I, I'm telling you, because originally when I did websites, people were asking me specifically, they were like, I want this specific. And I was like, I, I can only do that if I code. So I learned, I taught myself how to code. It was probably the most boring thing I've ever done in my life. I, I would, I'm not joking. I'd look at my computer, I'd do it, and I'd be like, this, I, I can't do this. Yeah, no, not it was like I wouldn't want it. So I, I learned how to do it. But after I learned how to do it, I was just like, I cannot, I, I'm so bored by it. Yeah. And that's when I realized that I was like, Kate, at least now I have an understanding of what coding is, what goes into it, how long it takes, how bug fixes go, how and long. And then you also, if you ever hire someone to code in the future, then you are aware of the basic steps that you need to know exactly. in order to make sure that, again, like before you said, talking about... Uh, Nothing being taken advantage of. Yeah. Right? Because like now if someone, if I try to get someone to code for me, like say on the website, and I'm like, hey, I have a website, I need to, I have this feature done, I take them on, what's your quote? They give me a quote and immediately I'll know if it's if they're overpricing or not because I'll I, I'll know how much work is. Going it's to go into it's it. similar to uh, parents telling us no stuff about your car because you don't want to go to the mechanic and get ripped off. Yeah, a hundred percent. I know nothing about cars by the way, so I should get learn up on that. But I know a little bit. You probably know more than me. I I know nothing about like nothing about cars. Yeah, I don't really drive anyways. I'm in Toronto unless I'm in with unless I'm in. You've said it many times oh, on the podcast. Yeah. You've What's said it mean? too many times before to censor yourself there. Yeah, okay. Well, if I'm in Whitby, I drive. That's the only time I drive, though. Like, I don't drive anywhere else. So I'm like, no really need for me to... 
I mean, I guess there is a need if I buy a car in the future, obviously. But at this stage of my life, I don't. But then that's something where you can hop on YouTube and search that out. There you go. I actually learned how to change my um fluid. Not my fluid. My my breaker fluid through YouTube. Because we had my my fluid was low in my in the car. And I was like, how do I do this? So I went on YouTube, I searched it up, and I was like, oh, this is how I do it. Okay, let me pop this, open yeah. this. And I did it for the specific, like, the specific car I have. I literally, for the Jeep, I searched up exactly for the Jeep, and it showed me how to do it on the Jeep. So I was like, it's, like, I'm getting the full experience for my specific But that's the best thing about it, too. Like, I had a Dodge Charger um, SXT, not an SRT, SXT, okay? Give those so but... It's still different. It's built different. Not not very different, but it's still built differently than like if you were to have an SRT or something. And so the fact that you can go on YouTube and search up that, you can search up, I had a 2013, I'd search up a 2013 Dodge Charger SXT and it would give me what I needed. There was a recall on some of those cars. It told me exactly what years exactly. It's just, yeah. it's crazy how we can do that now. One thing I want to end- But that's also only been our reality. But that's so it. for me know, to say what else. for me to say that's crazy is also kind of crazy for me to say because <laughs> we've never experienced anything else we've yeah. never experienced a reality where we don't have these things readily available to us at yeah. any point that we want we have computers in our pockets yeah and soon it's going to be super computers and super assistant let's let's see oh Menos <laughs> computers recording I was going to say show us your computer Menos computer is the thickest fucking thing on this planet I have a sorry his thick phone. phone his phone very thick phone um Yes, it it's is. a brick. It is a brick, because uh, my life is on there, and I make sure it's protected. But one thing I want to end off on, and this is for change specifically. Oh, are you ending us off? Oh no, I'm just with this is my like ending quote. Like this, or it's not my ending quote. This is my ending. Like he's like, fuck this conversation. Did you want? No, no. Do you have uh, other other stuff? I'm down. I mean, I feel like there's some things we didn't touch on that we could touch on because we went in such a different, a different direction. direction. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? Um, okay, well, we, we've been we've been recording for maybe like forty five minutes now. Forty five minutes, maybe okay. an hour, okay. maybe maybe fifty minutes. They left. Conversation sure flew by. Yeah, it's a champagne. It's also the champagne. How about you? Chug, chug, chug. Don't make me right. I'm gonna spill all over it. Please, myself. half of it. <laughs> <laughs> are you you did champagne. you did that to yourself the champagne does things it does things wait you didn't cheers me how rude you yeah, know <laughs> okay we're just picking up on us being idiots <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was really hard. I heard you swallow, but I couldn't swallow yet. And so I was like this. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> okay, I knew that. I knew there was going to be a moment like that. I felt it coming. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't need to happen. <laughs> okay, so... Before we do end off completely, because we talked about change, mm -hmm. but we didn't necessarily talk about allowing it or accepting uncertainty as much we kind of talked about just the concept of change and how we see it in our society right now so let's kind of shift that and give a few tips on how you can acknowledge it or like what is the difference between allowing change and forcing change and how does that relate to flow state what is flow like we talked about what is flow state um there were a few things you mentioned a few things there were a few things i wanted to point out as well um but yeah let's kind of shift it to that before okay. we cut off completely okay. because that was the general topic of our episode and i feel like we could kind of circle it off into a way where it actually gives a little bit more of a learning lesson versus just a general yeah. conversation i like it so i actually am curious to hear what you think because i feel like you have a lot of knowledge about this and i think that you have a lot of really really structured opinions but also informative opinions on this so i'm, I'm curious to see what you think in regards to that um 
In what sense? Like, which part of that are you referring to? Whatever comes to your mind. I feel like there's something, there's something, there's something you're thinking of specifically. I, I, I no, honestly, because I talked about all three of, all three, I'm putting a number on it. Like, I know exactly what I just said, but, <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, so. Before I will, like, okay, I, if you want to start, no, well, I was low state, if that makes it easier. Sure. Um, I was going to go into like forcing change versus allowing. Oh, then do No, that. I'll do that after because it kind of, it is nice to hear the difference after. But, um, so you talked about flow state before and what did you say exactly? You were allowing it to, allowing changes to flow like, yeah, right? Yeah. Like allowing them to just integrate into your life and accepting them, not so blocking it. When I think about flow state, I think about being completely immersed. Right. And so when you're fully immersed in something or you're fully immersed in what you're doing, you can almost, it almost feels like you've got a euphoric feeling, right? Because, and that's why, for example, so my dad has always been very passionate with what he does, right? And may have overworked himself in some areas. Um, but there was a point in time in his life when he was really, really into his business and he really, really loved it. And obviously he's, he's the same he's way. Again. He's the same way now. He's the same way now, a hundred percent. But because a lot of his work is online now, not as many people see it the way that they did before. And so when he was working on his old business, multiple people would like ask my mom like is your husband on blow like is your husband doing coke because he always had this like riveting drive and passion and energy to what he was doing and so and i see that in you thank you thank you but even like when you're doing what you love doing the most or when you are on track with what you're doing when you are on your schedule when you and as a Virgo, schedules and to-do lists make your life flow so much better. And some people don't need that. Some people really, like, it's just not something they need. But when you figure out what works best for you, when you allow yourself to go through the motions of trying different things and accepting the things that actually work and analyzing and evaluating, um, and you find out the things that work for you, and you finally get into that flow state because you've let yourself go through the motions. Mm -hmm. It is like a euphoric feeling. It is one of those things where you f almost feel like you're on top of the world. But the point I wanted to make about flow state itself is that when you are in that flow state, you lose that feeling of self-doubt. And there are obviously there's so many different things happening all the time especially when you're working on a project or a business. So you're going to have moments of almost like despair where you're like, fuck, wait. If, you know what I mean? Like when we, reflecting back on when we first did this podcast and started it and just, it was a year ago now, that's crazy. But I remember I had not a single doubt in the world until we had posted our first episode. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, did we just do that? We just, and then I was, Am I sure about what we just did? And then I was like, bruh, you haven't, bruh, <laughs> bruh, 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 you haven't had a single moment of, moment of doubt until now. Why would you let that yeah. take over how you're feeling right now? And so then I just, I was like, no, I'm right. Move on. Like, I don't need to think about that. And so when you're in that flow state, you are sure of what you're doing. You know that what your next move is right. It's like following your intuition. You hear something in your head and you're like, okay, I'm doing that. What do I do next? Okay, I'm doing this. Okay, what do I do next? Okay, I know what I'm doing next. Let's do that. And in being in that flow state and going through those motions of knowing what you're doing and moving to the next thing, you also give yourself feedback without even thinking about it. You just start to give yourself feedback. You're like, okay, I did this great. I did this great. What am I going to do next time? And so... You'll just give me an idea. So after the buffer done film, I'm going to tell you this idea that I had for for content like for podcasts because i just popped my hand i'm like yo that's actually really good okay good we'll make note of that pinky finger yeah. pinky finger okay just so we remember yeah. 
Um, but yeah, so before when you were talking about flow state, I kind of wanted to get that out because you described it in a good way. And then making that analogy too to water is so important. And a lot of people, when they're going down their spiritual journey or spiritual route or just learning more, you'll hear people say like, ground yourself, be one with the earth, um, hug a tree, try, hug a tree, try and try and embody the different elements of the earth in order to feel like at peace at one like fully one does that make sense yeah yeah and so when i think about that i thinking about i think about like grounding yourself like going outside touching the grass like you know what i mean doing that but also yeah but also letting your thoughts and letting your feelings and everything flow like water right but then also letting yourself be as energetic and passionate as fire right and so just like looking at the different elements and um that was a really good analogy that you made before about that is because when you are and it's crazy like it's kind of crazy to think about how when you are fully in your flow state like you are admitting all of those different elements without even having to think about it right because you are doing the things that you need to for you but you're also doing the things to move forward but you're also you're not thinking too far into the future where you are becoming anxious right and there's that i forget who it was said by um but the saying people who live in the past are depressed people who live in the future are anxious but the people who live in the moment are or in the present moment are peace at yeah. peace yeah. and so that always like sticks with me and if i have a friend come to me about something that's stressing her out or stressing him out and it's something that happened in the past or it's something that happened in the future that's always a quote i will refer back to because it's such simple words but it makes so much sense and it applies to everything right and i I think i love the fact that you uh, you brought in the elements to it you said flow like water and your passion should burn like fire fire. ground yourself like the earth does like the roots of the trees yeah and I'd, I'd say i i love that and i think that in terms of the elements elements are so key in terms of and then air too. air too i forgot about air forgot move about air fast as the wind yeah that's it move fast be passionate be grounded i think and thinking like- about wind too is being like kind of accepting to everything too right like accepting the different movements of the wind accepting it's kind of like water in the sense that you're flowing and you're just accepting that but But you know i I like it i like the use of the different elements because it shows a different perspective and it also brings spirituality into it yeah i think sometimes we forget that as much as we're human beings the earth is our teacher and we can learn a lot from the ways that it moves and the ways that it acts and the way that it responds to different things too yeah i i know I i really love that and i think that it's really important to make sure that you understand what each of those things mean and it could resonate differently with different people but but as everything should everything should 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 resonate different angel numbers for example they should resonate differently with everyone and if you're like if you're fixating on a number that you found on google then maybe you're not looking into the deeper meaning of it usually what happens when you see an angel number the first message that pops into your mind is the message that is trying to be displayed from that number uh-huh. and if you search it up on google sometimes i can help because on google it will tell you what it means well i feel like but but on google but, gives you a good understanding what, what i'll say is, is is this i'll say this is how i go about it i see an angel number something will pop in my mind I'm like hey i have that i search up on google see the definition and when i do that i piece the two things together and say wait a minute this is what it means for me. Mm-hmm. This is the meaning of the number, but this is the meaning for me because this is what my intuition was telling me. And then maybe that meaning of the number online gives you direction into where to look in your life. Exactly, where yeah. to focus and put yeah. the energy. Because me and Ashley were talking about this today, actually. Energy is currency, right? And- yeah, no, we were on the streetcar. And so we went to a march today and we had bought in two flags. And then... um some random kid like just out of nowhere we're walking he looks at mano and he's like do you want this it like, is a tiny flag yeah, like gigantic 
no, 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 don't, 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 don't. But like gigantic flag, like a huge, like this, this flag was so big it could have gone on Queen Street. Like yeah. it could have gone on one of those giant poles. Yeah, it was huge. And he says, he taps my arm and he goes, "Excuse me, bro." We're like in the bro. middle of a crowd too, just moving in the middle of a crowd, walking, and he taps me and he's like, "Bro, bro," and I turn and I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, "Do you want this?" And I look at it. And I'm like, "Sure." And then, and for me, what I kind of thought and the reason why we went to go buy the flags was because we both didn't necessarily prepare in the way that I felt like we we could have could have, yeah. yeah. Um, and that was due to like it being a last minute thing, um, and us intertwining it with other plans. Yeah. But because we went out of our way to go and do that after, and then he acknowledged us while we were walking. It was just, I looked at Mano when we were on the streetcar and I was like, it just goes to show you that energy is currency because it wasn't that we didn't want to do that. It just, it wasn't until we were there while we were like, oh, fuck, we should have done that. Because let's take it, when we bought those flags, the flags were like $10 each and they're like the small ones. Yeah. The fact but I, I, didn't was... think, I didn't think twice about it. I no, like, no, exactly. We need them. Yeah. We should, ha- not need them, but like we should have them. We should have them. Exactly. And the, the fact that, I was just, because I was talking to you about it with one and I was like, the fact that, sure, we paid for these, but he just gave us a flag that's probably worth And there were also, dollars. there was also what, fuck, there was thousands of people. 50,000 people just standing around us right there. And then, why, why, why you? Us? Why, why you? Yeah, exactly. Why, why me? And that's why I was like, strange, but it's how the universe works because energy is currency, right? It, again, in a flow state, when you believe and when you're grateful, I honestly think the most powerful the most powerful emotion and state of mind you can be in is gratitude. Mm-hmm. And I think gratitude is so powerful because when you're grateful, you exude the most energy. Mm-hmm. I actually, most, yeah. there were a lot of moments while we were there where I was very like, uh, the reason why I kept pointing out those kids who were starting the chants and stuff, who were like the ones leading it when it got quiet, was because I personally felt like that was so beautiful, countering what we were marching for. Yeah. Was the fact that these people are, or these children are at such a disadvantage that we're fighting for, but then these children here are fighting like as hard as they can. Yeah. Right. And so there were like many moments, and that's why I pointed out to you so many times, was because I felt the gratitude for them and being able to be there and to watch them and experience that and i don't know if you noticed but the first the first one that we noticed the first uh little girl that we noticed who was screaming her lungs out like i was right there and i was yelling right back at her as loud as i could because i was like that is so beautiful like that is amazing absolutely and i I remember when you did point that out i was like I was, I was leadership. yelling. That all I know. Leadership. Yes. So, cause, yes. Because the fact that they did that, it is, it takes balls to do that in a crowd full of people. It's, and that's why when I saw the kid doing that and we saw the kid doing that specifically, we were like, we are going to yeah. support. We're going to. No, I was, with no, when I say I was yelling, like I was yelling when she was yelling yeah. and I kept looking at her too. So she knew that like I was acknowledging her for what she was doing. Exactly. And I think that was really nice of you to do. Especially throughout the whole day today, you were doing like kind act on kind act on like you were doing a lot of kind acts today. Let's not talk about those. Right? <laughs> no, you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Kind. I'm kidding. So and thank it was, you. I feel like it, it was just building up your karma, your good karma, karmic energy, and I just this is something I've thought about the past week too. Um, And the more videos I see and the more information I find out and the deeper it gets, um, I think about it. And even today, like today was probably the first time that I had called my mom in a couple of weeks. But I go to bed knowing that even though I haven't talked to her today, I know she's safe. Yeah. And even if only I like I've only talked to my dad about business today, I know he's safe. Mm -hmm. Or even if I haven't talked to my brother, I know he's safe. And so. The last couple of weeks, I've spent a lot of time just appreciating that. And so being able to go today and go there with you, like, I was really grateful 
and I don't know if I fully expressed this, but I was really grateful that you agreed to go with me because, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really happy we went. Um, but again, and I said this to you earlier, whenever I mentioned it to people around me, they were like, okay, well, just make sure this doesn't happen or make sure this doesn't happen. And in my head, I was like, if everyone tells everyone who's going that, they're not going to feel as inclined to go and it's not going to be what it should be. Right. Yeah. And so I was just really grateful that you were as enthusiastic about going. I was just all of it together. Like it played out exactly how it needed to. And I'm really happy that it did the way it did. Well, again, because we have the same values. We've talked about it before, but when you surround yourself with people with the same values as you, you always have each other's backs, not just in terms of like going to an event, but in terms of just life in general, like, you know, you have someone you can go to that shares values that you also high, hold high, high in truth mm -hmm. in, to yourself, to your being. And I think that's why we mesh so well is because we have, we have probably not the same values, but we have similar values yeah. to an extent where it's like, we feel like no matter what. I think you always, also, something that I've noticed about you is you understand the ability that you have to take leadership and maybe you're not taking leadership in every part of your life because you don't need to take leadership in every part of your life but wherever you can make a difference you choose to whether it's in school um, whether it's online whether it's like going to what we did today um, you always take that opportunity so that's something I've noticed about you that I appreciate appreciate about you well I think both of us do that too like I feel like you you in yourself I have imposter syndrome when it comes to stuff like that, though. Like, I know I'm doing I, this, but then I also have... I do, too. I think everyone, everyone has imposter syndrome. But the, the thing, the difference between having imposter syndrome and acting with imposter syndrome is that even if you have imposter syndrome, but you're still acting, no. knowing that you have it, you are still acting. And actions speak louder than words. So whenever I see you, you're always taking actions. You're always getting opportunities. You're always acting upon opportunities given to you so even if you have imposter syndrome imposter syndrome can't stop you because you are not letting it stop you from taking action yeah so that's a good point. That event that's a good point. Even going to that event today that march day you could have said no i, I shouldn't be here because i'm not part of that minority yeah but you still went regardless of what you're it's one of those things too where i was a little i don't want to say afraid but i was a little hesitant into like posting it after because i don't want people to look at that and be like oh well she's just going for the trend yeah 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 but that's not and that's not the way that i act upon things and i guess maybe maybe it's like trauma from high school or something that has stuck with me when it comes to that like just Maybe it was just the group of people that I was around who were super judgmental. And so I hold that to a certain standard, like inside. But I also check myself, right? And that's why I have posted. That's why I have said things that I've said is because I know why I'm doing it. And it doesn't matter if this person sees this and thinks that. Like, I don't fucking care. Like, yeah, maybe a part of me second guessed it, but I still don't care because I'm doing it for the reasons that I believe are right and are true yeah and again the only time somebody is going to try to pull you down for doing something is when they are internally angry about themselves in some capacity that's why i don't care like even people leave bad comments they leave rude things they you know they they oh my god do they, the comment we got on our but, instagram today but the thing is even when we got that comment i don't you were like respond with a heart so i did that's the thing because for me i don't care like if someone leaves i was comment, i was gonna delete it because i was like no i don't care for me <laughs> mantle goes just leave it just respond with a heart that's engagement <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like like literally like people leave rude comments and i, I like at this point like four years Mano Mano four years ago would have looked at him would have been like sobbing and be like oh my god uh, dude is... four years ago i deleted my instagram because my ex-boyfriend and i um had broken up and not deleted but i deactivated it 
And let me tell you the amount of anxiety I had going back onto social media after deactivating for like three months and posting again. Oh my God. Like it was, now I'm like, I don't care. Like, yeah, I don't care if it doesn't match my feed. I don't care if it's an embarrassing video. I don't care. Like I posted, and this is probably one of my favorite posts of all time is my Paulina dump. And it's just like a bunch of random photos of us, but it really represents, I'd say our friendship and just the way we became friends. Uh And the last video is us when we worked at Hoops. And it's her rapping to Nicki Minaj for a minute straight. (laughs) Like, Ashley, four years ago, would be like, no, like, people aren't going to like that or whatever. But I've grown to realize that... Who cares? Who cares? Like, people are not going to fully or ever fully understand you, but they're not going to be able to fully understand you if you're also trying to hide certain things, right? And... Yeah. More people are similar to you than you realize. They, they, people like authenticity. Mm-hmm. So even when you do that stuff, people appreciate it to an extent. And if they don't, I don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, unfollow me then. Uh, who cares? That's the big, big shit I think both of us had because four years ago, I was the same way. I was scared. People would leave bad comments. If, they, if people left bad comments, I'd take it to heart and I'd be like, oh my, oh my God. God, one time, and we talked about my teeth today. It'll <laughs> before. <laughs> Before I had braces or anything. Great topic. <laughs> um, no, but I actually, I had, and I was an insecure motherfucker when I was younger. I'm not going to lie about that. I was, but I feel like it takes hitting your lowest when it comes to things like that to realize how to climb to your highest. And I had somebody DM my own photo to myself and make a comment about the gap between my teeth. And that is something that had such a grasp on my ego for such a long time that as soon as I could get my braces, as soon as I could deal with all of that, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Right? But first of all, I don't remember who sent it to me. Second of all, I don't think they were relevant in my life at all. I think they were just some random stalking me. Third of all, who the fuck knows where they are right now? Even if they, like, they probably don't even remember commenting or sending that to me, right? So, no. The one thing you realize, people, even if they do say something nasty to you or, they're, or they're, they comment something rude, half the time they forget like, 30 minutes after they do that. Because it's so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Mm-hmm. But they just felt in that in that moment that they needed to tell you that one thing because they were so intrinsically it was, it was like offended. an it's almost like an impulsive thought too yeah right like they hear it they're like yeah i should do that they don't think about it they just do it and then they move on and can we notice also that most of the accounts that that try to make rude comments are usually anonymous accounts because they don't yeah. have their face behind it so it, for me it's it's laughable i've been i'm just kidding <laughs> but but that's the thing i don't care because for me whenever a rude account comments and they like leave hate comments i'm like that's engagement. Like I said before, leave a hard comment back. That's what engagement. Maybe they'll reply to that and be like, why are you not? That's another engagement. But, you know, it's, yeah. it's just building up your own engagement. I don't care. I don't care if you're, you're angry at me if you don't like me. Okay. Yeah. Why are you paying my bills? No, you're not. That's yeah. Just so why, why would I care? Yeah. Um. Another thing. Okay. So what we were talking about change before. I, this was another thing onto what I wanted to mention. Um, kind of sh- just shifting back to that topic. But. I wanted to compare forcing change and allowing change. And I found a good analogy online. So if you were to be forcing change, uh, let's let's put it into the example of working out. Okay, so you're doing push-ups. If you are forcing that change and you're not doing it because you're listening to your body or because you're listening to what you need to be doing, you just one day woke up and you were like, I need to do this. And then say you tried it a couple times, but it's still been difficult. Okay. So say you're doing push-ups. When you're forcing change, even when you're halfway down that push-up, you're thinking about touching the ground and then you're thinking about pushing up. Right. So you're not thinking about the movement that you're doing in that moment. You're thinking ahead or you're thinking about the gratification that's going to come from finishing it. Whereas if you're allowing change, say you're doing a push-up, as you're doing that push-up, you are totally letting yourself be in that moment as you're doing it. When you are halfway through, your, you're 
just halfway through your push-up. You're not thinking about the end of the push-up. You're just do you're doing it, right? And so that kind of went with what we were talking about with flow state and everything before. But I thought that was a really good analogy because long-term goal setting, goal setting in general, all of that is really important. But if you spend the whole time thinking about that instead of the action you're taking right now, then you aren't going to reach that goal in the way that you want to, or you're not going to reach it by the time that you want to, because you've been so focused on that end goal versus what it's going to take to get to that end goal that you are going to slow yourself down. And that, how do I word this? You want to visualize yourself being there already, but when you are taking the action to get there, you don't want to be stuck in the moment thinking about you being, say, a top influencer when you need to be speaking on video, right? Like, if you're stuck thinking about that, you're going to direct yourself off the topic that you were thinking about because you're, or that you were supposed to be speaking about because you're in your head thinking about something else. So that was just another point I wanted to make because... Yeah that went along with what we were talking about before and I had it in my head and I've been waiting I had it like at the back yeah, of my head yeah. waiting to say that to you but yeah do you get what I'm saying though? I, no I do I'm, I'm gonna give you another analogy to go with that Ben because the fact that you and I'm gonna give you a butterfly analogy because I, I know you're a butterfly you send a lot butterflies symbolize you you love butterflies think of a caterpillar mm -hmm. a caterpillar does not know what's going to happen when it goes into its cocoon but it knows inherently that it needs to go in its cocoon to grow to its next stage of life. Yeah. So Caterpillar, even knowing that it's going to be uncomfortable, it's going to be unprotected, and it's going to be in a state where it literally is defenseless, anything could happen to it, it still goes through the process, it goes through the ship, it goes into its cocoon, and then however long later, it comes out as a butterfly with wings. Mm -hmm. And now no longer does it need to crawl on branches, it can fly. Yep. And now its growth has expanded a hundred million times because it can go anywhere it wants. Yeah. And that just shows the trajectory of growth and how that plays out in, like, let's say a butterfly, right? I also want to tie in another analogy, and this is the one that my dad uses very often, and it's a very good one. Um, and it goes with kind of, like, setting those long-term goals, whatever. But solidify where you want to be, but accept that... Actually, no, I'm going to rephrase that because he says not to use the word but. We do not use but. <laughs> um, use but. Solidify where you want to be. Along the way, accept the changes that come with getting there. Because if you cannot accept those changes, you're not going to get there. Both so, sure the yep. so, say, okay, say you book a flight to Hawaii. Okay. I love this one. Yeah. So th this is the analogy he uses all the time. Um, and he uses it in different ways. There's different ways that I could tell this because there are different ways to use this analogy. But uh, with this, with the intention of what we're talking about right now, if you book a ticket to Hawaii and you get on that plane and the pilot has a direct route that he's going to take, but there's a storm on the way that he can't go to or else it becomes dangerous. Is he going to keep going through that storm because that's what the map's telling him? Or is he going to fly around it and compromise so that everyone's safe and so everything, so you can actually make it to Hawaii? Yeah. You're going to choose to make that change and go around, even though you don't know how you're going to get back on track. You just know that you're going to be, you're going to be okay, right? So. Yeah. And I remember he also said, if I book a plane to get to Hawaii, I don't want to end up in Atlanta. No, yeah. So the the That's other upsetting. the other way that he also told the story was when you book a flight to Hawaii, you don't book a f plane ticket to almost Hawaii. Because if you book a plane ticket to almost Hawaii, you're going to end up in the Pacific Ocean, right? So you need to solidify where you want to be. You need to have a good understanding of where you want to be, not almost where you want to be not kind of where you want to be because if you don't have that direct goal of where you want to be you're gonna end up in the pacific ocean like you're gonna end up like malaysia 37 37 
370? I don't know. Malaysia 370. You end up with Malaysia 370 in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's a good place to end off. Yeah. I think that's a really good place to end off. So, okay, well, I mean, I guess... We circled back. We did. We did circle back. Cheers. One last cheers. (laughs) Hey, thanks so much for listening to the show this week. You can subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can write to us at embodimentpod at gmail.com. And if you want to send us a DM, it's at embodiment.pod. Or if you'd like to follow us or message us personally on Instagram, it's at emmanuelseries and at ashley.fry. I'm Ashley. And I'm Mano. And you've been listening to Embodiment, who you are behind closed doors. Thank you guys. Have a beautiful day, babies. And I am so grateful for you.